Hello and welcome back to the channel. Hope you had a lovely weekend and just taking a look at the kind of macro menu of what's been going on so far today and the outlook for this week. We're going to talk a little bit about the new escalation, which I'm sure you've seen from some of the videos on social media between Russia and Ukraine. We're also going to talk about the extension of emergency measures by the Bank of England to address specifically the fixed income market in the wake of the UK mini budget. US earnings kick off this week. We've got the likes of BlackRock on Thursday, then other big investment bank names like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley and Citi all report at the end of the week on Friday. Also got an update on the semiconductors. We're expecting them to move lower on the open of the NYSE today um, in step with what we've seen in the Asia Pac region on the back of a new announcement from the US administration, tightening rules on semiconductor exports. And then we'll look at the week ahead. US CPI is undoubtedly the main highlight that's likely to influence people's expectations about what the Fed will do at their November meeting with markets pricing at the moment the fourth consecutive 75 basis point rate hike but more on that shortly let's take a look at the main headline then from the weekend in the general broader news sphere and that undoubtedly was that missiles have struck Kiev and other Ukrainian cities earlier today Monday this comes two days after an attack on a key bridge um, to Crimea that Russian President uh, Putin has blamed on Ukraine. Overall, uh, there hasn't been too much of an outright reaction in oil prices, for instance, but uh, WTI crude front month futures do sit still up at around the $92 handle, which is sharply higher, of course, over the period of the last seven days, given that OPEC plus decision to cut production dramatically by 2 million barrels per day. It does mean, though, that energy traders, more broadly speaking, are going to be relatively anxious now on the risk of further escalation and disruptions, obviously, to gas flow from Europe will still remain um, something to be vigilant for as we go forward over the coming days. In terms of the Bank of England, as I mentioned, they've expanded their emergency support for the UK bond market. What specifically have they done? Well, you can break it down into three real parts. One, they've doubled the size of its ongoing auctions. They're launching a temporary expanded collateral repo facility. A real mouthful, but I won't go into explaining what exactly that is, but just check out the Bank of England website and their press release for more uh, information on that. And then expand the types of collateral it accepts. And, and all of these measures aimed at ensuring that the LDI funds, and you remember that was the one with the big shakeout in the UK rates market um, two weeks ago. So liability driven investment strategies, giving them time that they need in order to unwind positions and have the liquidity in the market to act by the end of next week, which was the initial horizon that the Bank of England had given in order to stabilise what was that big blowout in UK markets uh, on the back of the mini budget. Um, they will also provide a broader assurance that the Bank of England stands ready to keep the market working even as investors make a dramatic shift in their valuation of a wide range of assets. So again, all of the usual forward guidance, guidance type statements coming out of the central bank um, more recently. Earnings season then. Let's have a quick look. As I mentioned, you've got BlackRock here on Thursday. You've got likes of JPM, MS, City, and Wells Fargo coming on Friday. Here's a quite an interesting thing to look at. This is a survey conducted by Bloomberg over the weekend or at the end of last week. Um, and more than 60% of respondents to that survey said the earnings season will push the S&P 500 lower. And about half of the poll participants also expect equity valuations to pull back even further from their average of the past decade. All of this, of course, coming um, in the um, context of the looming recession with earnings outlooks likely to be downgraded given what's on the near term horizon. Um, on our watch list were those big companies that you mentioned. What we tend to see is that although the likes of Goldman's and so forth will report next week, it's really the first big banks out the gate set the precedence for how market participants will view that overall sector performing. So really Friday's a big day. Um, BlackRock will look at as an asset manager in a little bit more isolation, but that will really uh, set the scene for how then financials are likely to perform. And of course, we're looking at potentially a big um, difference between the traditional investment banking divisions, which has suffered immensely given the degree of market uncertainty at the moment, really impeding their fee generation as a revenue stream comparative to the, the broader volatility that we've seen, which generally has been boosting trading volumes. 
Um, one of the things, though, that the Bloomberg survey was highlighting was they basically asked uh, many different fund managers, what do they think is the one company to watch to really define the earnings season? And from a macro perspective, what a lot of them came back with was Apple. And the reason why it's a key stock to watch is really twofold. One, just the magnitude of the company. It is the biggest company in the S&P 500. But the other thing is it represents an array of key themes. Now, that being consumer demand, supply chains, the effect, the effect of the appreciation of the US dollar, and higher interest rates that are happening and are continuing to happen at the moment. How is that impacting the company? Does that act as a litmus test then for just a general broader risk appetite perception across the board. All right, other things to look out for. Um, this is the one I mentioned briefly, global chip makers. Um, their stocks f have fallen as the US has restricted uh, semiconductor exports in a bid to slow China's progression, particularly on the military advanced side of things. Uh, again, to break this down into three more digestible headline parts, one, uh, they're going to restrict certain chip exports. So think about AI, supercomputing, things of that nature. Two, uh, they're going to tighten rules on sharing of semiconductor equipment. And three, create new hurdles for supplying unverified Chinese firms with equipment essentially. Now, overnight, we did see uh, Chinese giants like Alibaba, Tencent, all trade lower, even more uh, that move prominent in chip makers listed in that, that region. And we'll be keeping a close eye on the lights and video and the rest when Wall Street gets open later on today. Um, one of the other things to mention then is what's coming out for the week. And just to go over this in a chronological order to keep things uh, moving, it is a U.S. national holiday. It's Columbus Day, actually, today. But as much as that being a national situation, it does mean the bond market uh, is closed. But the equity market, cash equities on the NYSE, is open as per usual. But you might see a little bit of impact on volumes. A um, few things then to be aware of. Today, relatively quiet in terms of major data. As we go through the week, though, Tuesday, you get U.K. jobs data. Wednesday, things start to pick up and become a little bit more interesting. You've got the FOMC minutes happening on Wednesday. This, is, of course, is when the Fed hiked interest rates by 75 basis points for the third consecutive meeting. You've also got the OPEC monthly oil market report on Wednesday. And again, in context of the big move that we saw on appreciation of oil on the biggest production cut we've seen since the onset of the pandemic, that might draw some attention for the energy traders. And then in the UK, you can see we've got the August GDP estimate. Um, UK GDP is expected to have contracted slightly in that month after stagnating for most of the year as, as a result of soaring prices hitting household demand and business activity. But as I mentioned before, and ultimately the headline piece for this week, all eyes will be on the US CPI report for September, comes on the coattails of that US jobs report, which has seen the market shift back up to a high probability of around 78% um, implied probability at the last check that the Fed will execute their fourth 75 basis point rate hike. Um, and in terms of what to expect, the headline um, should drop to 8.1% from 8.3%. But of course, as ever, the devil is in the details and that headline reading is likely to reflect then what has been uh, a drop in energy costs. What will draw more focus for the overall lasting impact will be What's the core reading? So Xing out those volatile components like food and energy. And it is expected that the core reading will be bolstered by a continued rise in shelter costs. So that's something we'll be looking at very closely at the time of that release. Also on Thursday, away from data, the G20 finance ministers and central bankers will be meeting. There's also been lots of things going on from Japanese currency interventions to the emergency uh, measures that have been taken by the Bank of England, the Fed hiking rates, all these different things. So you can expect some commentary towards the back end of the week on those matters. And then Friday to round things off, we've got Chinese CPI, PPI and trade data, always an interesting thing to take a look at. And that will come alongside the US retail sales report and the University of Michigan October preliminary reading. So one interesting thing there is about the time horizon that you are looking at US inflation. Although the core reading might go up, as I mentioned, on shelter costs, 
we can get some visibility at least from consumers in the Michigan reading about what do they think consumers about one year and five year inflation and is that starting to now move lower just given all of the situation that is happening economically at this present point in time. So that's really your week ahead. Uh, hopefully that was useful. Don't forget as ever it'd be amazing if you could like and subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so. More videos coming out later this week but I'll leave it with that and take care.